Foot Clan shipped is done differently. Their expert shoppers pick up fresh groceries, tech gadgets, video games, and even pet supplies from your local stores you love. Get everything delivered to your door in as soon as one hour. Your shopper will keep you updated with texts from the aisles and can pick in-season produce like a total pro, thoughtful shoppers, convenient service, peace of mind. That's the difference ships makes. Try the same day delivery for yourself at ship.com slash footballers today. That's S-H-I-P-T dot com slash footballers. This is Alan Lazard, a.k.a. the Lazard King, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Monday, September 28th. Let's make it the best Monday ever, fellas. It might be the best Monday night football game ever. That's what I'm talking about. They call it Cedric Wilson Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen. Dontrell Inman Day. <laughs> Rex Burkhead Day. <laughs> Justin Jefferson Day. Hey, I'll, I'll allow that one. No, oh, Justin yeah. Jefferson. That's fine. First I was a pick. big Jefferson fan in, yeah. in Minnesota. Uh, I had Lucky Charms for dinner. Oh, congratulations. For dinner. Because the Cardinals lost and Jason beat me in our league of record, and that combination left me in a tailspin. Mm, I am sorry to hear that. I had Two a, balls. I had a different experience. Two <laughs> balls. So you could have had Lucky Jason. Charms for dinner for a completely different 100%, reason. 100%. As I was feeling lucky. Look, mine was more like self-defeating. Hashtag not a sponsor. Lucky Charms. <laughs> That'd be nice, though. They can sponsor a segment. Yeah. Good or bad. Yeah. Like, we've just... Magically we've... delicious performances. <laughs> oh, this thing writes itself. I know. It's, I'm all set up. No, I, I I, came home from the studio yesterday, and the Cardinals, you know, they could have easily beaten the Lions, and they didn't, and Kyler Murray made some mistakes. And then I just didn't even have a shot in the game against Jason, so I have no... I have Mahomes and Kelsey tonight, and I have no hope of winning... And so, yeah, I was in one of those, you know, emotional fantasy football moods where I was like, dang it, I got to watch the Sunday night game, but I'd like to run as far away from football as I can. So, Footclan, no, it happens to that's everyone. My, that's <laughs> why I brought it up. Yes, this is, I mean, it, it, one of us it was going to just have a bad day. <laughs> I mean, that's just a fact. We get so tilted and we care so much about Magically, football. magically depressing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Come on, General Mills, where are you at? <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers, thefantasyfootballers dot com is the website. The start, sit, tool, all the rankings, everything over there. Jointhefoot dot com is the community, and you can uh, you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, subscribe and review. You can listen ad free on Stitcher Premium. It's Monday, so it's time for some puns. Mm. There's some good ones today, Food Clan. The most popular pun today, Joshua uh, Smelly. Yes, mm -hmm. when you fumble, you mm -hmm. smell. Mitch Trabinsky. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. <laughs> uh, Jason, this one is for oh, you. Tyler Rocket. Oh, you got to roll the R, Jason. Hot Rocket. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor, touchdown. Odell Meckham Jr. Mm. Uh, T.Y. Motel 6. Mm. <laughs> Do not book a stay. This one's for you too, Jason. Kenyon Drake. Mm. Kenyon and Flake. Followed up by D DJ Morg. <laughs> oh, Morg? No. Oh, oh. Not recommended for a stay. Drew small sample size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Or poo sample. Yes. Or even goo goo ga poo. Oh, yes, yes. We knew it was coming, but let's have some fun with Magic Mike Davis. Yes. Oh. Smelvin Gordon. Flex Burkhead. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. I think we're done. <laughs> there were some crazy, crazy performances this week. Yeah. Mostly by people you've never heard of. 
you like Cedric Wilson Jr. Yeah, superstar. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll go through all the studs, the stinkers on today's show. There is a Monday Night Showdown DFS article on the website. You can check that out. Yeah, that's free. Look, if you've never played DFS and you want to know what it's all about, see what the the guys are putting out there, what kind of information they're putting out, go. it's on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, and check that out for free right now. Weekly Rewind. All right, let's get back into our weekly injury news segment, mm, right. or so it seems. Chris Carson, knee sprain. Look, uh, and if you saw the play, I try, I tried the best I could after watching the play of, and I can't re remember the, the defender's name, but the best way you can describe it is the defender is holding on to Chris Carson. is like, who is down? Just hanging out on the ground because the play is over. And then the defender does an alligator roll mm -hmm. while holding on to his leg. And I'm like, what is going on here? And then uh, Twitter definitely jumped in with like professional ex NFL players. Like that is Bush league crap. That Trist Tristan Hill, Tristan, like NFL, you need to review this. He'll be fined, likely not suspended according to Ian Rappaport, but luckily it was only a knee sprain for Chris Carson. So he might miss some time, but we'll see. Chris Godwin. This is not good. No, another injury. This time a hamstring injury. He was out with a concussion. Now the hamstring, it's hard to imagine a hamstring injury not costing you at least a week. No, I mean we've we've seen it with everyone out there. If you if you remember a couple weeks before the season, you know, or the week before you had Kenny Galladay and some of these people tweak their hamstring and they were out for a while. And then when when Galladay was back, right now week three, he wasn't a hundred percent. So this is it's bad news for the next looked, couple of weeks. Looked pretty good though. <laughs> yeah. So that are you getting back on? Am I getting back on the potty? <laughs> oh, potty Miller. Miller. <laughs> yeah, Scotty Miller had eighty plus receiving yards. Of course he did, because we all benched him. I know. Dang it's it, Scotty! Fantasy. Come on, man. Yeah, you got to you got to keep an eye out. You know, we've talked recently about the inconsistency of wide receivers. Scotty Miller had a down game two weeks ago. He had yeah. a good game three weeks ago. A good game this week. So yeah, yeah. And, and the difference between three straight good games was one drop touchdown pass. Yeah, sure. if he catches that pass. We're not talking about him that way. Right. Tariq Cohen. The Bears are fearing a torn uh, ACL for Tariq Cohen. This will mean he'll miss the season and more work for David Montgomery in the passing game in those two-minute drills. Deontay Johnson. This was a bummer for a lot of fantasy mm -hmm. players. Exited with a concussion. Early. Yeah. Yeah. Jarek McKinnon suffered a, uh, I think they were saying upper rib injury. I don't know if I care whether it's upper or lower rib. Is there a difference? I don't. We'll have to check with our uh, with our fa or their injury guy, is that Matthew Betts, because I don't your know. Chest? I don't. I don't know. No, that's the inner upper. Oh, I the just inner never upper. imagine hurting my ribs and being like, I wish this was my uppers or my lower ribs. Like, right. They're just all ribs. Jordan Reed exited with an ankle injury. Uh, they but he came back. He came back and then he left again. Oh. And then uh, Kyle Shanahan says it's not expected to be long term. Russell Gage exited with a head injury. Mike Williams, hamstring. John Brown, calf injury. Djax with a hamstring injury. To be perfectly... This was another contributing factor to my Lucky Charms uh, dinner. Was I played Deshaun Jackson for fear of a hamstring re-injury to Kenny oh, Galladay. Mm. Just poetic irony. Yeah. Poo. Poetic. Yes. Uh, Dallas Goddard. Ankle injury, going this, to miss some time. Yeah, this one is a bigger deal. He he left uh, this – look. If you, so you're not playing Dallas Goddard anymore, but the, the fantasy spin of good news is Zach Ertz finally came through with some semblance of a good fantasy game. It took overtime to get there, but is, Zach Ertz should be a much stronger play now, at least for a couple weeks. Yeah. Carson Wentz, though. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, what nah, is happening? I don't know how to undo the curse. What is happening? <laughs> I put the curse on after that tweet, and I, I don't know. I have no idea. I've never learned how to undo one. I, I've watched enough you know, late 80s, early 90s movies to know you have to do the same thing again. You have so I would that just, he's the best player on the field. One week in, one, one quarter in next week, I would send that tweet. Okay. Just do it. Hey, all right, no eyes of Newt or no, he cauldrons. Is, I mean, goodness, he stinks right now. <laughs> he's, he doesn't look good. 
Jared Cook left with an ankle injury. Mitch Trubisky was benched, and Nick Foles came back and won the game. And I have no idea how. Like, if you if you saw Nick Foles, I don't first either. Three Speaking of curses, like the first three to four passes from Nick Foles, what that was quarterback play of someone who's never watched a football game in his entire life. And then, but the, but then comes back, <laughs> wins the game. Even his fadeaway throw to win the game looked as ugly as can be. I mean, Dude, Nick Foles is magical. It's, and we, it's one part Nick Foles and one part Atlanta Falcons. I think you're underestimating the, the one part for Falcons. I thought you were going to say it's just the contrast of Mitchell Trubisky. One part who, Mitchell. Who <laughs> was simultaneously your stream and you said could get benched, which we said, hey, they're 2-0. and oh. What are the odds of Mitchell Trubisky getting uh, benched? It would take him looking like <laughs> Mitchell Trubinsky. Goodness. Oh, At least he put up an, uh, he put up some fantasy points yeah. before getting benched. Circling the drain, the Broncos uh, quarterback Jeff Driscoll benched oh. in the fourth quarter. Brett Rippon, who I learned plays quarterback Oof. in the National Football League this weekend. Be Rippon. <laughs> yeah, uh, not good. We didn't see uh, Blake. No. Tyrod Taylor expected to miss week four as well. I think we saw 50 pass attempts from Herbert. Herbert looks promising. Yeah, he's just got some, you know, it's the mistakes combined wow. with the I mean, rookie. Yeah, when you How many targets for Keenan Allen? I believe it was, a, 19. was it 19. Yep. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Not enough. I'm not sure there would be 19 pass attempts if Tyrod Taylor was the quarterback right now. This is the best thing for the pass catching options for Austin Eckler who looked amazing. I love that Herbert had he took my strategy of if I were a quarterback I would just throw at my best player every single play until the defense was It's up. legitimately why the Cardinals lost that game. Yeah. DeAndre Hopkins was open on every play, and Keyshawn Johnson was getting targets in, in crucial possessions. And if he just threw it to Hopkins every play. Well, when you have a chance to go downfield to a double-covered fifth-round wide receiver, you got to do it. No reports of new injuries for these guys because they didn't play – uh, in week three, Julio Jones, Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, A.J. Brown, George Kittle, Cam Akers. Hmm. I think Kittle was on the fence, and they could have played him, but they were worried about the turf. They were yeah. worried about the turf at that stadium. As they, they should have been. I, I do think that George Kittle will be back. Uh, Cam Akers, man, uh, talk about being out on the wrong game when Daryl Henderson just absolutely goes hamburger. The most interesting thing about the Rams this year is they're the third most uh, rush-heavy team in yeah. football. So there is plenty to go around, and we'll see what that looks like. But Henderson looked great. Ten-yard chunks. Yeah, it looked like Gurley when he was yeah, making those the, big plays. The Rams look great, and they and they they won that game. Uh, in my opinion, <laughs> in my opinion, and look, I'm thrilled they didn't. Because, you know, as as this, as this a, is what's great about opinions is in your opinion he won now. Like factually, right. scientifically yes. provable, score wise, right? They <laughs> lost. But my point is, I th they had the game won on that fourth down stop, and then the flag came, which I think was a nonsense was, flag call. Look, as an it wasn't Arizona, a great call. As an Arizona Cardinal fan, you oh, got, I love the when, call. <laughs> when you see a penalty ref, you got to call the penalty. As an NFL fan, that was that was rough, rough. Let's talk studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Oh, me. Oh, my. Russell Wilson, Josh Allen. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Start him. Go, go ahead. In terms of fantasy production through three weeks, Russell Wilson and Josh Allen are both in the top three all time. So you're having two of the... Josh Allen's start would be the only thing we'd be talking about if Russ wasn't cooking with gas. I mean, he just broke the record for the most touchdown passes. He is on pace currently for 75 passing touchdowns. So. <laughs> 75? <laughs> yes. That is, uh, I apologize. 74.7. Oh, yeah. now it seems reasonable. Right. Touchdown rate of 15 plus percent. Like, what? What? And if you observe these games beyond just, I mean, you could use as many words to describe how great he's been as you want, but he's just standing back there picking which touchdown pass to throw. 
Yeah, it's it's very bizarre that the the defense of the Dallas Cowboys didn't try to change anything. At least at least look, I'm not a I'm not an NFL coach. I can't speak to X's and O's, but watching the game, it seemed like they were just doing the same thing over and over and over and hoping like this this time it's going to work, guys. We'll just keep sending four. The four. difference DK Metcalf makes in this offense being mat maturing into mm -hmm. this Yes. Ever-present threat on the field is humongous. It seems impossible to keep both DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett from getting behind you at, at, at a certain point, and then all Russ does is throw it to the moon, and the moon kisses the ball and throws yeah. it right back to the wide receiver that's wide open. Yeah, and but they have Miami and then Minnesota <laughs> on the schedule for the next good. two weeks. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, man. You, you ready to make a, a trap game prediction, Mike, for your Russell Wilson consistency? I will say no, <laughs> but we all know it is coming at, at some point. No Chris Carson, most likely, for a little while. Yeah, the only week that I'm not going to play Russell Wilson is week six. Is that the bye week? Yes, it is. Right. You might want to start him, though. I know. I, on that week. I don't doubt it. <laughs> you might. Josh Allen had five total touchdowns in this game. He was... <laughs> Excellent. He was excellent. He was excellent. Yeah. Uh, first player in NFL history with at least 10 passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns in first three games. Uh, Raiders, Titans, Chiefs keep playing Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. Dak, the way that Dak keeps getting his fantasy production has been a little bit messy. I mean, the Cowboys are one and two. It's been a lot of coming back in mm -hmm. games. 472 passing yards? I mean, this this is what Coach McCarthy said was going to happen, though. Uh, in the offseason, he said, we're going to have to win games with our offense. And and the defense was like, what you saying? <laughs> and then he said, you, you be quiet, defense, yeah. because we've watched you play. Jared Goff. Jared Goff had a very healthy Ooh. afternoon. Yes. They came back in a way. I mean, it was if, – if you, you know, if you didn't watch the game or see it, the Bills just dominated the face of the Rams, twenty-eight to three. It was it was an embarrassing effort by the Rams and a and a incredible Super Bowl worthy performance by the Bills. And then, as I said earlier, the Rams came back, took the lead, and I think should have won the game. Uh, so yeah, it was a it was a major credit to to the Rams' offense. What they shouldn't have to give them a better chance of winning, they shouldn't have gotten down twenty-eight to three. That was the real. I do agree that hurts your chances. <laughs> Unless you're down to the Falcons. In which case, it's equal chance. It's equal chance. It's like 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah. I'm sorry. Kyle the Borgogan, our editor-in-chief, is a, a big was a big Falcons fan. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few teams that are having rough rough seasons. Would you rather be – let me ask this. Oh, would I know you, the question. Would you rather be a Falcons fan and go through what you've gone through, or would you rather just be pummeled into oblivion from the first snap like the Jets and oh, be I'm a Jets fan? Give me Dan Quinn all day, best coach ever. I'm a Falcons fan. Don't, I do not. I couldn't imagine having to deal with the ineptitude of the Jets because you can watch Falcons game and have fun. You can watch a Falcons game and have hope. You, you sure your hope will be dashed to pieces. Yeah, you will have your soul ripped from your Absolutely. body. Absolutely, but yeah, you at least there's some. At least joy. you had yeah. a soul, right? right? To to be ripped from the body. If you're watching it's a that Jets age old game, question, would you rather have a soul <laughs> ripped from your body or not have a soul at all? Yeah, and that's the Jets. Oh, the community on Twitter is you know this tanking for Trevor gonna fix the Jet situation, and I I there are those that believe if you just put Patrick Mahomes on the New York Jets, which, again, making that equivocation of Trevor Lawrence to Patrick Mahomes instantly kind of silly. But if you put him on the Jets, could Patrick Mahomes save the Jets? Oh, absolutely. You, because I, the one thing that I know is that if you are a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback, you can play with Adam Gaze just fine. Peyton Manning did it and won a, won a championship. As long Be, as you're you calling your own plays on the field. <laughs> That's why, because you're not listening to Adam Gaze. Man. Oh, all right, uh, Tom Brady had a nice week. Breeze, very nice. Fitzpatrick. Breeze, Breeze didn't do anything. Br oh, the, uh, Breeze, uh, this is the most frustrating Trans thing of all transport time. Transport the ball to Alvin Kamara. That's, I mean, that's the, the game plan. It's called the Kyle, what was it, Kyle Allen big fantasy days yes. with Christian McCaffrey yep. last year. We, yep. we have um, you know, a, a plus two points for a 40-yard touchdown in our league of record. 
You realize Drew Brees gets to get that with a screen pass to Alvin Alvin Kamara's like he oh he kind of shook his head coming off the field. Brees did. He's just like, <laughs> all right, because that play made no sense. Yeah, Alvin Kamara is decent. A fifty-two yeah. yard screen pass where <laughs> it should have been a two yard pass. So, but my favorite part of that play was when he bounced off of the tackle. Yes, the balance of ba bouncing off the tackle. And before we talk about some more running back studs of the week, I want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe, the alarm company that is keeping you safe. It is keeping us safe. It is keeping this office safe. All of keeping Brooks, Russell Wilson safe but, but, in the pocket. Yeah. Brooks keeps all of his valuables in the studio. At the studio, yeah, because we have Simply Safe here. They've got everything you need to protect your home. Tons of jewelry. Or, or yes, what people don't know about Brooks, he's just blinged out. He loves. Yeah, he is dripping back there, <laughs> and Simply Safe keeps it safe when he's not around. With an arsenal of sensors, cameras to blanket every room, window and door treatments tailored specifically for your home, professional monitoring they keep watch day and night. They're ready to send the police, fire, medical, whoever you need if there is an emergency. No contract, no pushy sales, guys. All of this starts at just 15 bucks a month. It, like, simply say if we cannot thank them enough for protecting us and for sponsoring this show. You got to check them out. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping, a 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. All right. Yeah, Brooks also had – he's got the same grill as Alvin Kamara He does. does. He's got the same grill. 14 targets, 13 catches, 139 yards, two touchdowns through the air. And uh, only six carries. Pathetic performance from Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I he would. He had six carries? He's the wide receiver one rest of the season? Yeah. And the running back one. He's he, both. Here's the – let me ask you a real question, though, because the Saints are one and two, and I know it's hotly debated, and it'll be all over regular NFL chat today. Mm -hmm. Does it – does what you've seen from Drew Brees actually concern you? He's got no Michael Thomas – you know, everyone's making a big deal of his average depth of target, but if you look at the last five years, he's been 28th, 29th, or 30th every year in average depth of target. We knew that was the recipe for Michael Thomas as well. Are you concerned because, you know, people seem to be very afraid, and he seems to be going underneath even more frequently. I, I'm. Uh, are you speaking, are we afraid for fantasy, or are we for afraid Drew Brees for in general? Right, uh, and which leads into fantasy. I mean, because you're not going to have a 52 yard screen pass every game. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, a lot of people picked the the Saints to win the Super Bowl. I think they might have even been my pick preseason. I I can't remember, but that would make a lot of sense. All the continuity, you know, the the final year I believe of Drew Brees' career go off win a Super Bowl. I don't see that happening unless something changes with Brees because over the course of time you need to be able to come back in a game and air it out and do the things that he's been able to do in the past I'm not concerned for fantasy because he's going to dink and dunk his way to great success when you have Alvin Kamara and soon Michael Thomas you'll be fine but as far as if I'm a Saints fan I do have worries because even when you saw like okay here's a 17 18 yard throw to Emmanuel Sanders seems like over the first couple of weeks every single wide receiver is going to the ground to catch that ball it's 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 near their knees or feet every single pass. And whether that's just on purpose and it's a comeback and it's keeping it away from the defender, I just don't remember that in years past. All right, let's keep uh, twisting the knife on Andy today. Rex Burkhead, uh, and I'll tell you why, Rex Burkhead was 6 for 49 and 2 on the ground, 7 for 49 and 1 through the air. And you might say, well, nobody had Rex Burkhead played against them. And you'd be wrong because I, in our uh, CBS Telethon League, raising money for St. Jude, no way. My, where I am the defending champion, but was sitting 0-2, I, uh, I had Rex Burkhead started against me, and I lost by one point. Oh, my goodness. That's that absurd. That is absurd. With I a mean, very high score this week. I, one I, point. I have to imagine when you saw Rex Burkhead Keith Cummings, thank you. against you, you said... Hallelujah! <laughs> this is fantastic. Wow, and and I was running away. I just I had you know Josh Allen and players that were scoring lots of points. But a quick matter. a quick shout out to again to Kyle the Borgog and the editor in chief of the Fantasy Footballers, also writing up incredible content for the DFS Pass. Rex Burkhead was highlighted in this week's he DFS Pass. He smashed it. This the week. dart throws article in the DFS Pass was unbelievable. I mean, just left, right, and center. It seems like it was written this morning. It it seems that's exactly what it seems like. Yeah, 
Like great sports almanac stuff in there. Uh, yeah. Well done, fellas. James Robinson, big week. Derrick Henry, a couple of touchdowns finally. 26 for 119, which means that hit the more. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Congratulations. Uh, Austin Eckler, huge game. 11 for 84. I'm telling you, just the film on Austin Eckler this year. He is as good, if not better, than he was last year. He's breaking tackles on almost every single touch. It, I expect that you could still probably trade for him lower than what his real value is right now. It's it, it's possible. It is possible. But, my man, the, <laughs> 11 targets, 11 receptions? Yeah. This dude has caught every target? That's pretty much what Kamara did. 14 targets, 13 catches. I, no, but I'm looking at his box score here. He's caught every target this year. Oh, the whole year? Yes, because Austin Eckler's really, really, really good at football. And yeah. now with Justin <laughs> Herbert, he's getting those targets. I I was very, very panicked after week one, oh, yeah. seeing what, what was going on with Tyrod Taylor. And look, the, the, the if you've got Eckler, Justin Herbert is – saving your your fantasy skin right now yeah the the best thing that could have happened to the fantasy options uh, in the you know in los angeles for the chargers was this move to herber and you hope that you know it doesn't switch back for fantasy purposes because if it does i think you sound the alarm again nick chubb great game dalvin cook great game james connor this was such an interesting game from james connor uh, watched every snap of that one 18 for 109 and a touchdown five targets and uh, But at the same time, we saw some interesting red zone work. Benny Snell was in there for a goal line carry, didn't convert. And then Anthony McFarland yeah. was on the field a quite rookie. a bit and looked okay, which was something we're not used to seeing as other backs kind of work into their rotation. But obviously, Connor was outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, no thoughts well, on Well, it that. was weird. I, I agree with you. It was weird. <laughs> yes. When I watched, I didn't, I, agree. <laughs> I didn't see anything special from James Connor. He didn't. Look outstanding to me, and then every time I'd look at the box score, I'm like, "Oh, he's doing better than I th better than I thought." And then he has a great game, but I'm I I just was surprised because watching it, if I didn't have you know my app out and looking at the box score, I'd be I would assume I'm disappointed in his fantasy production. He has balance. Like he's he's not gonna he's not gonna out athlete you. Like we saw it, you know, last week on his big breakaway run where. Other running backs, if they're faster, they're scoring a touchdown easily, and he got chased down. He got caught. But he just he bounces around on guys and, and stays up. As long as he's healthy, I mean he's he is a good running back. He's a he's a solid player. He's just he's not the breakaway four three speed type of player. Jeff Wilson and Jarek McKinnon both contributed for fantasy. Wilson had two touchdowns, so ended up on top, but McKinnon he's got a the rib injury. We'll see if He's yet another injured. Whether Mostert comes back next week, whether yeah. McKinnon's out, Jeff yeah. Wilson right now looks very solid. Yes, for fantasy purposes, he does. Mike Davis had a big week, eight for forty-five through the air. That's that was the key in this one, which is what he was heavily targeted last week, and uh, outperformed my expectations. Yeah, you, uh, that was the hope. You saw it at the end of of week two when it was. I just assumed it was garbage time. It's all these little dump off targets. You know, weren't going to be replicated, but. They were, and he was great. So all the CMC, you know, managers that that ended up picking him up as your as your pivot. Yeah, so far great. so good. And I believe Arizona next week. Daryl Henderson, twenty for one fourteen and a touchdown. Malcolm Brown, same amount of snaps, but Henderson did a lot more with him. Daryl Henderson looked like the player we believed he could be coming out of uh, last Memphis, year's. Yeah, coming out of last in, in, last year's rookie class. He was one of our favorite running backs. Unfortunately, he was stuck behind Todd Gurley at the time. And then you brought in Cam Akers, made things real muddy. But Daryl Henderson, uh, it, it, you still need, I still need some time. I'm not going to declare Daryl Henderson is the guy in this backfield. I don't know that there ever will be a guy. But as long as Cam Akers is out, Daryl Henderson's looking like a great play. He's been a top 12 running back two weeks in a row now, barring Monday Night Football, of course. But... 11th last week, 11th this week, and, and looking good doing it. Very, very similar situation to San Francisco. I mean, yep. you're, you're kind of picking a running back to start in San Francisco every week these days, and they're running it so much that you can do the same thing in, in Los Angeles. All right, wide receivers, Tyler Lockett, huge game, 13. He had three touchdowns in the first half. I know, I was super disappointed. <laughs> 
As you wanted the, more than three. Well, half? I mean, but yeah, you know, when he's got three in the first half, I was like, can we do six? Is, can, can you didn't we go to four that? or five. You said, can we double well, up? I mean, double look, up. The pace, what is the record? The pace says. In one can, game? Yeah. If you yeah, can do you three can and a half. Down. I mean, you can get six in a game. Justin Jefferson, nine targets, seven for 175 and a touchdown. Super impressive performance from Justin Jefferson. He'll be one of the bigger waiver wire pickups this week. Yeah, we'll have a lot of discussion on whether it's a mirage or real tomorrow and, and how much of your budget to spend. Yeah. Cedric Wilson. Who? Cedric Wilson Jr., seven targets, five for 107 and two. First touchdowns as a uh, cowboy. And yeah, he got two of them. It's, it's, it's a wild west down there for the Dallas Cowboys of who's going to come through with the yardage and now 500 that, yards to go around every game and, and now, you got to pick people and now if you're adding cedric wilson into the mix that is oh boy so unfortunate we said this is the rare game where you should be able to start cd lamb uh and michael and gallup michael gallup and amari cooper all three could have legit good games and uh, here comes cedric wilson it, just play wide receivers uh against the, the yeah. seahawks Keenan Allen, 19 targets, 13 for 132, and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Allen Lazard, eight for, uh, or eight targets, six receptions, 146 and one. Just missed the, you know, huge 72 yard touchdown, dragged down at the three. He's not very fast. No. <laughs> but yet, the separation but he, like, on yeah, deep routes. Getting right? open, man. Love it. And, and, and his effort to get that, that first ball, that everyone's giving Rodgers the credit for the, you know, kind of back foot, fed away mm -hmm. throw. Lazard just he, got there. He answered the question definitively um, as far as who is the one between him and MVS. There was debate on both sides. I think it was a close call, but you saw the not, – not because he had more fantasy points, but like the way that they came, the way that they involved him. In, it looked more like how they used Devontae Adams, the clear first read in the offense. Uh, and, then, and then he did enough you know, on his own with those targets to, to be great. There was uh, an interview – of Aaron Rodgers was on the the Rich Eisen show. You know, it's talking about how yeah, good the team that. is, uh, you know, playing with a chip on your shoulder. And then Alan Lazard came up. And I don't if you've ever heard the way that Aaron Rodgers speaks in interviews, it's it's very very soft, very just underspoken. And they're talking about Alan Lazard and how he's like, "Well, you know, Lazard could play with the the chip on his shoulder whether it's him not being drafted." And then he just goes through like Eight things for like Aaron Rodgers is keeping track of all the times that Alan Lazard has been slighted. It's it's fantastic. It reminds me of Jordan in Last Dance, where Jordan had all these reasons to keep something, you know, keep the edge. <laughs> that is Rodgers, but Rodgers does it for other people too. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. man can hold on to a grudge. All right, Lockett wasn't the only my guy with a good week. Cooper Cup, ten targets, nine catches, one hundred and seven, and a touchdown. Good game for Robert Woods as well. Nice to see both of those players. With big weeks, Jared Goff has a nice matchup this upcoming week, and he's got two straight weeks with three total touchdowns. So it's looking pretty good for that offense. Hopkins, another 12 targets, 10 for 137. Ho-hum. Yeah, it was a pretty disappointing game. Uh, 10 for 137 felt like his floor. I won't hit the breaking news, but we did get an update here on Chris Carson. Ligaments intact, minor knee sprain, even has a chance to play this week. All right. That's good news. So, yeah, good for you, Chris. Considering how the injury happened, it's yeah. even better news. Um, pay attention to T. Higgins. Led the Cincinnati wide receivers in snaps this week. Two touchdowns, nine targets. Uh, Tyler, Bur Tyler Boyd, 13 targets, 10 that, catches. There's a name missing from this Cincinnati list. <laughs> yeah, a couple mm. weeks in a row. Did we mention Allen Robinson? No, we did not. Uh, he's a name to watch. I mean, if, if Foles is the quarterback, I think it's much better for Allen Robinson. Being able to catch the ball is an important part of being a wide receiver. He had a touchdown taken away from him in this game, too. I don't know if Fiz you all agree it was taken away. But I, I thought it was taken away. 13 targets, 10 catches. Looked great. Uh, and Andy Isabella. Hey, oh. two touchdowns for Andy Isabella. I all probably right. don't need to mention it, though. Yeah. Jimmy Grandpa, 10 <laughs> targets. Oh, man. He ran a ton of routes in this game. Two touchdowns, six for 60. Okay, we'll see what yeah, we'll waiver see. show tomorrow we'll looks see. like. Tyler Croft, two touchdowns. Eric Ebron, a touchdown. Tyler Croft was another one of those DFS dart throws. Wait a minute. DFS pass. We've got another touchdown at the tight end position. 
Gigantor, <laughs> yes. Mo Alley Cox, three targets. Three Do catches. the right thing, Indianapolis. Come on. Do the right thing. I think they, they've done the right thing. Nah, for three two... targets for a giant is not enough. Yeah, but they didn't even play their main <laughs> starters for the second half of this Jets yeah. game. And for the Colts, Jack Doyle was active. He was back on the field, limiting Gigantor, Mo Alley Cox to his three it targets. It really doesn't seem fair to have one titan's nickname be baby hands and the other titan's nickname be uh, look, look yeah i don't i don't know if it's fair or not to say that a giant is a giant and another man has wee little baby hands and drops passes oh my god <laughs> take the strong hand i think uh i think we'll talk about the other Bengals ride receiver in this oh section. no Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Mm, Got to eat that odor. Let's get it out. It's all I'm eating these <laughs> days. It's just odors. Just eating odors. <laughs> uh, someone get me a bowl of Lucky Charms. <laughs> Ryan Tannehill, stank. Not good. I really That's thought... Wild. 321 yards. Can I ask you a question? Because it was Minnesota, right? Mm -hmm. So the matchup was great. Mm -hmm. Jason, you had Josh Allen against the, the Rams. Yes. You have Ryan Tannehill on your league of record team. You have A.J. Brown. If A.J. Brown had been active, how tempted would you have been to go with the stack of Ryan Tannehill? Just no, I, take I, yourself back because it's Minnesota. I completely understand. I, I liked Tannehill's matchup. I thought he was a good play this week. And I would have started A.J. Brown, so the temptation for the stack might have been there if it wasn't Josh Allen. There would have been zero chance that I would have benched Josh Allen on the tear that he is on, so you can at least comfort yourself there. Ryan Tannehill didn't stink. I mean, 321 yards, he, he did stink for fantasy. You were very sure. disappointed if you played him. But, you know, that that's the context we always need is, did this is this player playing poorly? And you need to move off of him, or did the touchdowns go to Derrick Henry this game, and he didn't, you know, have any any passing touchdowns? That's what happened with Tannehill. Well, the big deal, the big news of that game was uh, Steven Goskowski, and he is now going sockless. That did it. That's he's crediting going sockless for the change in his fortunes. I'm, I have, I am not joking. This is not just because it causes like a big rash on his like the top look, of his foot. This is not satire. This is actually happening. That, that, I could see that making a difference. Now I he mean, went six for six in this game with a fifty-five yarder. He is going to need some odor eaters. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. He's eight for his last eight after that horrible first game. Talk and about sticking with a guy. I've thought yeah. about that with Vrabel. You needed all six kicks to win in this game. I assumed that he would be let go after week one. Obviously, he's got a good relationship from the Patriots day with head coach Mike Vrabel, and he decided to stick it out with him, and goodness gracious, that what what a great piece of coaching if that has played a part in the confidence that you give your kicker and not just body bagging him and uh, sentencing your team to have poor kicking play right. to have a show of strength. Cam Newton, Matt Ryan, bad yeah. weeks for yep. fantasy purposes. Cam Newton, only 162 passing yards. When it comes to – here, here's, a, here's an early season lesson. If your quarterback does not have their wide receiver one, it's not that it can't go well, right? Drew Brees had a fine fantasy week this week. Thank you, Alvin Kamara, but he didn't play well. Ryan Tannehill was not good for fantasy without A.J. Brown. Matt Ryan was not good for fantasy without Julio Jones. Apparently, having a solid wide receiver one matters. Running backs that let you down this week, Melvin Gordon, Kenyon Drake, Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs. Definitely concerned about Joe Mixon. He has not found his way into the end zone. Has Jacksonville this upcoming week, which I think is a, you know, an opportunity for him. Mm-hmm. But we haven't been able to see him and Joe Burrow together, and it hasn't worked out fantasy-wise for Joe Mixon yet. 17 for 49 in this game. Pretty disappointing. I need to speak to all the Joe Mixon and Kenyon Drake managers out there. You're panicked. You're worried. They have not been what you want. You drafted a hopeful high-end RB1, but a guaranteed top 15 running back. And right now, you've got a, a running back two at best um, with those two players. And the reality is... 
you still got what you are drafting. There's no way that these two players will finish outside the top 15 this season. There's no way. Right now, the fourth most carries in the league is Kenyon Drake. The fifth most carries in the league is Joe Mixon. The volume is there, and the fantasy points will come. Yes, it's been disappointing. Yes, right now they are they are definitely a huge disappointment, but I see everybody, everybody on Twitter calling these two players busts. We're three weeks in. Nobody's a bust yet unless it's a season-ending injury, in which case you forgive a bust. They are very disappointing. I, as you know, my guy for Kenyon Drake, I'm disgusted. <laughs> but stick with it. It will work out. The carries, the volume is happening. Yeah, I looked that up with Kenyon Drake this morning. 54 carries on the year. Chase Edmonds, despite coming in for a lot of snaps, he's got like 12 carries on the mm -hmm. year. I mean, yeah. this is Drake's. Drake hasn't gotten into the end zone since week one. And that makes a big difference. So, yeah, just stick with volume plays like this. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that you don't make a pivot if you know you've got a good matchup with a James Robinson or someone else that looks Jonathan really, Taylor. Well, sure. I mean, uh, Jonathan Taylor has usurped these two for sure. But uh, you can you can um, you can make a different start over them if you if you want. But stick with them. Better days are ahead for sure. Kenyon Drake plays Carolina and the Jets. Better days are coming quickly. Yeah, if you want to go. Well, I thought that Detroit would be a better day, too. And now 18 for 73, not the end of the world. He gets no. in the end zone. It's a good good week. If you want to trade low for Kenyon Drake, now's the time to do it. Melvin Gordon had a rough week. Gets the Jets next week as a um, mm -hmm. salve. Yeah. David Montgomery, 14 for 45, was basically non-existent due to really the weird. game script. And Tariq Cohen was out there. And then all of a sudden, Cohen goes down. And Montgomery got targeted a couple times. Got the rock in this one. He's another one of those. I, I don't know. It's going to depend on your league, but he's another trade low target for me. Now, some people will see the Tariq Cohen news and say, oh, I'm going to hold on. I'm not going to trade him. Great. But some people don't recognize what that's going to do, and he's going to have a great rest of season without Tariq Cohen. And with the helpful Nick Foles moving the offense, hopefully. Yeah. Sure. Josh Kelly, are you worried about him after this hugely the disappointing – disappointing performance in the fumble it, it certainly was it uh, i need to dive in if try and figure out if we can get some uh information here from the coaching staff of what happened to his opportunities but from from someone who's watched a lot played a lot of fantasy football this really feels like fumble punishment for joshua kelly leonard fournette Oh, dude, no. What, this is why the, the policy is absolutely no Buccaneers. It com it went completely back to Ronald Jones. You do not do not play Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now. It's, Agreed. It's, you walk the plank. All right, Mike. DJ Moore, four targets, Oof. two catches, 65 yeah. yards. Unfortunately, this ball is just getting spread around a lot. Yeah, and it didn't get spread around to DJ Moore. The, the four targets of this past week, very disappointing. Uh. Not even, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what happened. Why it was four? It was nine targets, thirteen targets, all the way down to four. Now he made the most of it. He at least gave you two for sixty-five, so it wasn't uh, a, a zero like it was looking. But this is this is not great news. If you have initials in your name, watch out. <laughs> DJ Moore, T. Y. Hilton, A. J. Yeah. Green. Green DJ, six DJ targets. Chark, DJ Chark did the right thing to s sit this one out. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that A. J. Green is not worth the franchise tag right now. That's fair. That's a fair thing to say. I mean, I think all three of these players need adjustments a quarter of the way through the fantasy season, essentially. And it's not looking good. I mean, A.J. Green, five for 36. Yeah, that's rough. Um, For realizing it now, to speak more to DJ Moore, more to more, uh, Robbie Anderson also had six targets. I mean, this was a interesting... Cha complete change of uh, what we've seen in the first two games. Not that I'm happy about it. You just certainly can be worried about it. And T.Y. Hilton just hasn't made a big play all year. No, we t we talked up that 50 yard touchdown pass that was that was missed, mm -hmm. and you know you'd feel better uh, about those games. But now three games in a row, uh, I blame the quarterback for T.Y. Hilton. <laughs> I will say this: it was it was he was not on the field for the fourth quarter again. I mean, the Jets game was basically. It was over Jordan Wilkins. The Jets started the game in the first 90 seconds by spotting the other team seven points. It was a pick six to start the game. Right off the bat, you go, oh, 
This is a bad T.Y. Hilton game script. If I had to choose who I want rest of season between T.Y. Hilton and A.J. Green, it's T.Y. Hilton I agree. to me. I, I think A.J. Green is I mean, Phillip Rivers, what I feared he might be. Phillip Rivers the last two weeks is averaging about 23 passes a game. That is not a, that is not a game script for any fantasy value for, for passes. Well, as multiple pick sixes hurt yes. um, Jonathan Taylor from having a better game, too. They, didn't, they weren't on the field. And then the Jets. How did the Jets respond to – the circumstances they were up against. Well, there, it was second and, what, 20-something, and they went with a handoff to Frank Gore. They didn't even try. I'm they, trying they not. Didn't even Wait, try isn't to this win. like, what was it, hyperdrive? Or yeah, yeah, that was the hyperdrive, man. Second it and seems long. like we're being trolled. This is an SNL skit. I mean, <laughs> I try not to talk about this all the time because Jets fans don't need to hear any more of it. Yeah, they see it every week. But it's, it's literally, they're like 50-50 pass rush ratio. With Kalen Balaj and Frank Gore. Now, maybe he feels like he can't. You know, Darnold wasn't great. Darnold made a few good plays in this game. Darnold threw two pick sixes. Darnold made some huge mistakes. It's hard to blame him. It's also hard not to include him in the blame. Sure. But I just don't. What you said is right. They're not trying to win the game. How do you hand the ball off on second and. What was it? Third and 20. Second and 27? It was second and 20 something, yes. When you're down by multiple touchdowns, second and 27 handoff. Deception. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you what. It oh, didn't it work. It just feels made up, man. It just feels made up. It's unbelievable that yeah. Adam Gase has a job. I'm sorry, Jason. And he'll fans. get – this is what we said in the studio yesterday, Jason. He will get another. He will be fired, and he will get another – not a head coaching job, but he will get another coordinator job. That's good for the show. That is good for the show. Because we can make our jokes and we can look super smart by avoiding every offensive player a, wherever he goes. It's also great for that fan base that they can go, it's time time for me to leave. I need to find a new team. These people suck. You know, he was, I think he was rumored for Arizona back when we hired oh, Kingsbury. Oh, man. Oh, man. Dodge to we wouldn't home. even be here. Dodge to, Dodge to be home. <laughs> uh, Beckham and Landry, nothing special. Four for 59, four for 36. Uh, they ran the ball, and they can do it. I mean, they're mm -hmm. above 500 now, and Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt looked incredible again. Every time that one of them touches the ball, speaking of those two running backs, I think, why isn't the other guy getting the opportunity? He was great. Oh, the, he's oh, this guy's awesome. I mean, it's every play. Both. Can you imagine how difficult it would be to defend against a fresh, at all times, a fresh Chubb yeah. and a fresh Hunt? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, Stefanski is doing exactly what he wants to do in this offense right now. Which is not let Baker throw it. Now, he's not a stinker. Uh, he wasn't a, a stud of the week either. I just want to make sure. Jason, do you know Mike Evans' stat line? Oh, from my week gosh, three? I do. And it is it, it should be a stinker and a stud. I don't get it. It should be both at the same time. But you have never. That's a toot. You lit it as a toot, Andy. Well done. You have never, and this is a guarantee, there has never been a worse multi-touchdown receiving game in the history of the NFL. If you're unfamiliar with his stat line. Mike yeah, Evans, Mike, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Two receptions. Number two. Two yards. Two touchdowns. It's unbelievable. It's impossible. Which, didn't he have a one-yard touchdown in week one? Uh, it was it a two-yard two. touchdown. Oh, well. Yeah. Doubling his. That's how he was able to get the second one today. What He's do got you a make two of yard... that? Is that like, do you, do you panic or do you just? No, you, you ride that out. This was, the Buccaneers didn't really have to try to win this game. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, Corey Davis, six targets, yep. five for 69. That's fine. Yep. Any other real, uh, Brandon Cooks, just five targets, three for 23 in this game with Will Fuller kind of coming back. Nothing much from Slayton and Tate. Very hard to trust anybody on the Giants' offense right now. Yeah. Um, it, just looking at the 16-game pace for Mike Evans, he's on pace for oh, uh, no. 500 receiving yards and 21 touchdowns. <laughs> so, the, the weirdest <laughs> usage that's, of that's all time. Absurd. Now, Dar it's basically the Jordan uh, Howard of wide receivers yes. right now. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. it is. Not a comp you want. No. Darren Waller, four targets, two catches, nine uh. yards. Now, he was... When it comes to Jacobs and Waller, we didn't know if they were going to even play. Right. And Waller ends up playing, 
and I'm sure people chased last week's points. You kind of are stuck oh, playing had him. To, if you had Waller, you started him for sure. Yeah, but it was a stinker. It, for fantasy, it's like really put yourself in the mindset. I don't know what you could have done. You you, you have Darren Waller, and it, you're holding on hope, holding on hope, and then you get to the weekend. Are you really going to the waiver wire and saying, I'm grabbing no. this guy who's who isn't rostered at this point? I mean, you're playing Darren Waller even though this was – this was Jon Snow, the gif of Jon Snow pulling out the sword while the entire army charges at him. You know, you you knew what you were up against here for Waller. Better days are coming for him. Higby, Henry, Fant, Ingram, any concern across the board there? Uh, not not much. I mean, you, you like Hayden Hurst. Where are you with him? Because only one catch for one yard, one touchdown. It was weird. Two out of three weeks have not been great for Hayden Hurst. I'm I'm still okay with Hayden Hurst. Um, obviously, Matt Ryan did not have a great game with Julio Jones missing, and so you know I I think the offense as a whole opens up. Hayden Hurst is similar to any back end tight end one opportunity. When well, Russell is, Gage is hurt as well, so you check on him because if Russell Gage misses time, that isn't an uptick for Hurst. Is this the time? Are we moving on from Logan Thomas because of Dwayne Haskins? Seven targets, just four for 31. Wow. The Dwayne? targets are there and it tempts you, but. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind moving on at all, but Dwayne Haskins. His time is out. running out, just so you know. If, Rivera is tired be, of it. Because there's nothing hopeful. <laughs> if, if you're watching the games, and I'm watching Washington with a very critical eye because I want my man. Antonio Gibson and Terry McLaurin to get things done. McLaurin is getting it done, but it's not with the help of Dwayne Haskins. He's he has been incredibly disappointing. Daniel Jones has been incredibly disappointing, but there's just I haven't seen anything from Haskins this year where you're going, okay, okay, we can we can coach him up. Let's eliminate some of these mistakes. It's just no, he's it's, just looked bad. It's been really rough. Yeah, and, really and, bad. And yeah, so the targets aren't coming through for Logan Thomas. The targets didn't come through for Noah Fant, but they they were there. If but you, you look, it's hard to have confidence there with now what? Right, the Brett ripping. Yeah, he's going to be ripping the ball all over the it field. Might, it might be Bortles. The the but I, I'm still taking the oh man please <laughs> let's go Blake I got a snake man yes I got a snake man but take solace in this tight end you, you at home you're saying man my tight end stunk this week they all did they all did let me read you the top ten tight ends you ready yeah Jimmy Graham okay maybe you started him maybe that was the tight end one all right Tyler Croft nobody started him nope. Ebron nobody started him Tanyan nope. Mo Alley Cox, okay, all right, maybe you chased last week. Jesse James, Foster Moreau, Jacob Hollister, Holy Mercedes crap. Lewis. Like <laughs> nobody had a good tight end week. I mean, you this had going to be a real layup for Travis Kelsey tonight <laughs> to take over the number one spot. Well, the number two spot, Jimmy Graham, two touchdowns, yeah. sixty yards. He he <laughs> two two touchdowns and sixty yards. <laughs> well, I mean, that's 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 nice. That's like uh, yeah. wait, I mean, if you if you're setting that line for Travis Kelsey of fantasy points, fair enough. You go, ah, I'll take the over. <laughs> yeah. All right, Drew Sample. That experiment's over. <laughs> Jason, Jason I, care to comment? I am. <laughs> uh, you, you, I, you talked me into Drew Sample. Look, uh, here's. <laughs> I want my fab back, Jason. Fish, my <laughs> official stance. I spent a lot of fab, man. <laughs> well, but that was in a dynasty league. You should have Drew Sample in a dynasty league. You, oh, you want to? I'll trade him to. I will absolutely. <laughs> I will absolutely trade for Drew Sample in our dynasty Good, league. Just give me my cheap. fab back. That's it's all more I want. of a stool sample. Yeah, I. I look, <laughs> it's one week where he disappeared. One week Wait. where he was involved. I, I, I'm not going to. Oh, I'm no. not going to just jump off the cliff already. <laughs> uh, I realize it was a. I mean, completely worthless. You know, <laughs> cricket filled game. But I'm just saying. You know, we tr we try to take in a little bit uh, more data. Well, okay, but you're not you're not playing him in a redraft league. No, yet. no, you're not playing him in a redraft league. But if you picked him up and spent a lot of fab in a dynasty league, you're fine. Jason Caping. 
produce sample might be like the, <laughs> my, the favorite thing I've ever heard on this show. All right, stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor de- defense. Yeah, Odor Eaters, go talk to Steve Guskowski. He needs help. Uh, we want to thank pristineauction.com. Our very favorite sports memorabilia website with hundreds of daily auctions. Calvin Ridley signed jersey $62 yesterday on Pristine Auction. Guaranteed authentication. That's what you get with Pristine Auction. All autographed items are authenticated by the top authentication companies in the industry. In fact, if you are watching on YouTube, we have a new addition to the back wall, and it is a signed Mighty Ducks D2 image that a listener sent us. And we said, we love it so much, let's put it right on the wall. And that is from pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Tomorrow's a waiver day. Enjoy the Monday Night Football bonanza. Oh, yes. Enjoy it. We shall. I will beat Jason if Mahomes throws eight touchdowns tonight. And so. they're all to Kelsey. That's right. <laughs> Farewell. Stay, stay safe, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, remember, are you dripping like Brooks? Are you flossing like <laughs> Brooks, our man out there who is just blinging? He is every, any type of jewels, he is just bathing in them. He got to protect them. You got to protect your house with Simply Safe. You protect your house, no contract, starts at just $15 a month. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. Free shipping, 60-day risk-free trial. There is nothing to lose.